So I'm back, back in my office, because I have to show you some graphics. And we're going to talk about some applications of the standard deviation. And first off, we're going to talk about Chebyshev's inequality. It has to do with the population standard deviation. Uh, Chebyshev's inequality says that at least 1 minus 1 over k squared percent times 100 to get percent of a population lies within k standard deviations of the mean. It's not too hard to prove, but this is in a math class. Uh, Chebyshev was a Russian mathematician who contributed to probability theory. Uh, and some, sometimes people get honored by having certain things named after them. Many times they didn't actually uh, create the thing that's named after them. They're just being honored because of their contributions to the field. And it's a, a well-known uh, example of using standard deviation. I'm sure Chebyshev did things much more important than this. It's not a very hard theorem to prove this, but we all know his name because we've all heard of Chebyshev inequality. Anyone that studied probability has heard of Chebyshev for that. Although if you study further on, you'll find more stuff that he did. Inequality is not too useful in applied situations because it's pretty much a worst case scenario. Usually many more observations are close, as close to the mean as the formula says. So many more than what the formula said are actually that close to the mean, k standard deviations away. Uh, for example, in our token example, nearly every token, not 75%, oh, so we're gonna try our example. We're gonna try k equal to two. And Chebyshev is gonna say that one minus one over two squared times 100%, which is 75% of a tokens should be within k is two, two times 0 0.4330 of 0 0.25. Now I'm in here. Two times 0.4330. Oh. Is 0.866. So that's point is 0.866. And we're close to 0.25. So we're gonna take the 86, so we're gonna take 0.25 plus 0.866 and 0.25 minus 0.866. And that should give us an interval that Chebyshev's inequality would say at least 75% of the tokens given by computing one minus one over k squared times 100% should be in there. So we do 25.25 uh, plus 0 0.866, 1.16, 1.116 on the high side, and 0.25 minus 0.866, negative 0.616. So we could call this um, a Chebyshev predicts 75% in this interval. Well, we see 100% are in that interval. As that's the kind of thing that happens when you use Chebyshev's inequality. Sometimes you use it to prove theorems because you, it, it's uh, the only information you have is the standard deviation. But in statistics, we make other assumptions. Just the standard deviation alone isn't really very much information about a distribution. So you have to anticipate anything that only uses a standard deviation to make a prediction it has to cover all cases. And so in most cases of interest, it's going to be pretty conservative, meaning uh, you can probably do a lot better than what Chebyshev says. So that's Chebyshev. Sometimes I wonder when I see these ancient, ancient, I think this was probably uh, pre-1900, um, pretty sure they didn't have uh, much in the way of, of uh, a lot of photography going on. This is certainly an oil painting. I wonder how much it looked like Chebyshev. Seems like in those days, the Russians had long beards. I tried to grow a beard like that, it wasn't very easy. I've seen them on people. But uh, it takes a lot of patience. 
and also strong beard hair, I think. So who knows, maybe you need special conditioner on your beard to make that happen. So here we go, so that was that. Uh, next, we have um, using the population standard deviation with bell-shaped distributions. So there's something called the 689599.7 rule, sometimes known as the empirical rule, that says for bell-shaped distributions, so or approximately bell-shaped distributions, um, if you start at the mean and you go mark it off in standard deviation units, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, and backwards, one standard deviation, two standard, three standard deviations, there's a tendency for the values to follow this pattern. So between the mean and one standard deviation, about 34% of the values, and from one to two, 13.5% and so on, but okay, so fine, that's the picture. I stole that off the internet. So we go, why is it called the 6895997? That's because if we go here plus or minus, and my pen will not write on top of that ink. Try this one. Um, the laser printer ink fights with pens. So that one standard deviation, one sigma from mu, we could call that plus or minus maybe, plus or minus one standard deviation from mu. That range from mu plus or minus one standard deviation is 68%. And then if we go two standard deviations like this, get 95%. And if you go all the way to three, presumably I've got something I can use. I'll try this, probably won't work. I go three like that, uh, it's 99.7% within three standard deviations. So let's just see how that looks in practice. Uh, here's an example. Suppose we have a bell-shaped distribution and we computed the mean was 10 and the standard deviation was three. Okay, so let's we'll try to draw it. That's the best plan. Well, this is just plain paper. Oh, I can do it. I'm not really positioned to it. Here we go. So we make a we make a bell. We go here, and it turns out the position of this uh, one standard deviation in that bell is just about the steepest point on the curve. So we go there. And we think that's one standard deviation. We just mark it off as standard deviations by using that same distance across. So mu is here. Mu was what? 10. And then we do it the same distance on this side, covering it up with my hand. Okay, one. Pretty much like that. And since the standard deviation is three, then that's 13, 16, and 19, adding threes. And that's seven, four, and one, subtracting threes, okay. And then it says, what percent of obs observation would be between seven and 16, which is here. So imagine just taking the regions in question, going 34% is here, 34% is here. And then over here, it says 13.5. Um, We'll go ahead and add those up. Eighty-one point five percent. So here we see that the standard deviation is incredibly useful and gives a very precise answer for how many values fall in different regions described by the standard deviation, which we did with Chebyshev. But here we know we have a bell-shaped distribution. And so for bell-shaped distributions, apparently the standard deviation is very useful and it, and it uh, gives you a pretty much exact answer for what fraction of the values fall in certain ranges where Chebyshev just gives you an approximate idea. So I think that uh, ends this section, I had to once again, go from a learning glass back to my office. And now uh, 
we'll probably move back to Learning Glass for the next one, example. And so I'm going to close this off. And um, we'll see you in a bit. Whenever you come back and visit, I will be here making more videos. It's becoming a, a full-time job for me just to make videos all day long. And uh, pretty soon, maybe I can get this finished. Uh, I'm busy erasing the board and creating all kinds of stuff on a regular basis. And can't wait to just get back in the classroom and stop the recording. But this has to get done first. So I will see you later. And I got to figure out how to stop this. Um, I guess I go this way. I want to stop recording. Over here. Here we go. Stop recording.